So you join me today back at the Oaks Lakes and finally there's a hint of spring in the air. Um, a week ago lakes were frozen over, we had loads of snow, loads of ice and it was horrible. Obviously very few bites to get in that weather, fishing was rock hard. But in the week since then temperatures have gone up, we've had sort of double figure temperatures every day for a week now and it's never dropped below sort of six degrees on a night. So water temperatures now heading in the right direction. There's some fish starting to move about. You can see odd fish topping and the water's colouring up. So for me, on F1 type venues, that means one thing, and that is it's time for pellet fishing. So today, what I want to do is run you through my approach to fishing with soft pellets in this sort of late winter, early spring time, just when things are starting to improve. And what I'm going to do is just have a quick look at my rigs first. I'll have a look at the bait. And then from then on, I'll go and do some fishing, catch plenty of fish, hopefully, and I'll talk you through what I'm doing, some of the little changes you can make and things that might just improve the day's fishing you're going to have fishing with pellets. So, first of all, my rig. Now, if you've watched any of the videos I've done on this particular lake when I've been fishing live matches, the first rig, exactly the same. So, elastic-wise, although the fishing's improving, you're fishing for a lot more fish, they're still a little bit sluggish, they're not going to fight very hard. So I've got a nice soft seven Jura slip that's going to sort of cushion any fish. I'm not really going to pull out of them, but it's got that bit of stretch, bit of backbone if I hook a carp, which are also waking up a little bit and starting to come to a bit of bait. Now, line wise, I've got 0152 slick silk. That's sort of thick enough and durable enough. It's not going to break, it's not going to get damaged. And importantly for me, I can reuse the rigs. Not only do I hate tying rigs, I also think once you've fished with it, you've got it working exactly how you right, how you want, you've got the right shot on it, you've got it fishing how you want it to fish, what's the point in breaking it off and re-tying it? It's working exactly how you want, so put it back on a wind and use it again next session. So that's 1.152 Aero Slick Silk. Moving down onto the float. Now, I know a lot of people like a nice slim bodied float for pellet fishing, but for me, that's not what I like to use. I think this type of soft pellet fishing is all about stability, keeping your rig dead still, keeping your bait right on top of that pile of bait that you've fed. So I prefer a more rounded shaped body. I just think that I can hold that still a bit better, keep it exactly where I want it. And this float is a two Bettini Delta. Another couple of things about the float, wire stem. So again, stability helps stabilize my rig, keep it where I want it, right on top of that feed. And the other thing is it's got a nice cane bristle in it. Now, I really like cane bristles when I'm fishing like this. My float dotted right down. It sits very, very well. Goes in, fishes exactly the same every time. And it's not sort of sticking up a little bit further one time and sat down or sinking. You could dot it right down. It stays exactly where it is for your full session. Now, the thing with dotting that bristle right down, and when I say dotting it down, I mean, it's dotted down that far. If I put any more shot on that at all, it will sink. Whether that's a number 12, number 13, it's gonna pull that float under. And that helps for two reasons. First of all, again, like I've just said, stability. If that float's dotted right down, getting everything under the water, it again helps just hold it nice and still right over that pile of bait. The other thing is it reduces resistance to fish picking up my bait. There's less buoyancy in my float because it's shot down so low. When a fish picks up my hook bait, it's not gonna reject it through feeling the buoyancy in the tip of my float. Going down from there, that's eight inches from the hook. I've got a bulk of shot. And that is one, two, five number tens. Now I've got that eight inches from the hook, and then I've got a six inch hook length, and that is 0.114 slick silk. Now, my reason for having six inch instead of a shorter hook length is while I'm looking to present my rig really well and the fishing's still a bit difficult, personally, I don't like having that knot close to the hook. I feel it looks a bit bulky, a bit cumbersome just not as nice as I want it to look. So I'll go for that slightly longer hook length, keep the knot away from the, the fish and where my hook bait is. Um, the other thing with having that slightly longer hook length, when you've got a light hook length, the longer length's just slightly stronger. So that's always a bonus as well. Now moving down from there, I've got a shot on the hook length. Well, it's not actually a shot, it's a stot, and that's a number 10 stot. So I use a stot there instead of a shot because it's not gonna damage the light hook length. A bit softer bit kinder to the line that's about three inches from the hook halfway down my hook length and it's finished off with a size 16 guru f1 pellet that's quite a big hook but first of all i can cover the most of that hook with my pellet 
and by fishing a bigger hook I'm going to miss less bites. So I always go for the biggest hook I can get away with pellet fishing. If the fishing's hard I can easily take that hook length off, put a smaller hook on, but if the fishing's good I've started off on the right hook nice and big, I'm not going to miss bites and I'm not going to lose fish. Now next thing's the bait. That couldn't really be much simpler. I've got, to drain the water off these, I've got some fishery micro pellets, nice and simple, just soak them in some water, soften them right up, and that's going to be my main feed. And to start with, that is all I'll feed in varying amounts and in different ways, but I'll be just feeding neat pellets. The other thing I've got, which I won't feed unless I'm struggling for bites, is some of this, and that's Sonia Bait Super Crush Expander. Loads of tiny little particles, lots of smell, lots of attraction without feeding too much. And when you're not getting bites, that can often draw some fish in your peg. The only downside for me to feeding ground bait is you often draw smaller fish in your peg. And quite often places like this where there's been a stocking over winter, you'll draw some of them stockies in your peg. So if the fishing's a bit harder and I'm not getting bites, I'm happy catching them. But to start with, I'd rather just feed neat micro pellets and hopefully catch a better stamp of fish. And then finally, just some plain old four mil expanders. Um, I just think the perfect size, the sit over my hook bait, they just slightly stand out without being massively bigger than my micro pellets I'm feeding. And it just allows me to sort of match the bait, but stand out very slightly and hopefully a fish will pick up on that, pick my hook bait up and I'll get plenty of bites. So I'll go and get on with some fishing now, catch some fish and I'll talk you through how I'm feeding and most importantly, why I'm feeding like that. Right, ready to start fishing and I just want to talk a little bit about different ways you can introduce your pellets. Now obviously I'm going to be putting them in through a pot, a small pole mounted pot, but there's still little ways you can vary how you do that and cause a different reaction from the fish. So at the minute I've just squeezed a few pellets in that pot and the pot's just the lid off a fruit shoot drink. I'm going to ship out, put my rig in, I'm going to hold my pole sort of maybe 18 inches off the surface and tap them in from a height. Now what I'm looking to achieve at the start of my session is to draw fish into my peg. To do that I need to make a little bit of noise. There's nothing better than sort of noise and vibrations of bait going into your peg to draw fish in and that's why I'm going to tap them in from a height. Now to start with I'm just going to keep doing that. I'm going to try and draw fish in my peg and keep tapping my bait from height until my peg tells me I need to do something different. By that I mean if I start missing bites, getting a line as foul looking fish, then I need to look at changing the way I'm introducing my bait. But to start with, while I'm trying to draw fish into my peg, I'm going to do that by making a little bit of noise and having some bait falling through my peg. Now to achieve that style of feeding, a lot of people will use sort of a, 
a sprinkle type lid, a pot with a lid on it with a hole in and they can keep tap and pellets out. That's a great way to feed your peg to start, to make a little bit of noise, draw some fish in your peg. Personally, it's not something I like to do. And my reason being, oh, that was a bite straight away, look, and we've caught one. Yeah, so the reason I don't like that sprinkle pot is I often find I can't help but keep on feeding bait. And I'm constantly wanting to tap bait out, overfeed my peg, and I end up putting too much in and overdoing it very early on into the day. Now them pots are great, and if you can condition yourself to not feed too often, not overdo it, it's definitely a good way to start your peg. If you're like me and you can't help but feeding, then look at other ways and just using a standard pot and tapping your bait out like what I'm doing now. Once there's plenty of fish in my peg, then I can look at changing how I feed. Look at that. And I might want to put my bait in making less noise by tapping them in closer to the surface. Or I also might want to look at changing what I'm feeding. Even I might want to change the ground bait, I might want to change the pellets. But at the start, just look to make a little bit of noise with your pellets. And plenty of attraction to draw some fish in. So, the session's been going really well, and I've just been tapping that bait in from a height like I spoke about, getting plenty of bites, I've caught loads of fish, it's drawn the fish into my peg, and to be honest, I'm not really missing many bites, I'm not foul looking many fish, and I don't need to change anything, but I just want to quickly talk about a couple of other things that you could do. First one is, what I've been doing to start with is tapping my pellets in, lowering my rigging with it, right on top of them, nice and accurate, and then wait for a bite. It's often very beneficial to do it the other way around. So put your rig in, get it settled, and then tap your bait on top of it. And it's amazing how often that can result in a really quick bite. So if you float sat there, you tap your bait on it, it'll go straight under. And I think what must happen is the fish are on the bottom grubbing about eating some bait you tap some more in and it's like they react to it and quickly eat everything that's on the bottom waiting for the next lot to come and on days when that works if you're lowering your bait in after you've fed you can quite often miss out on a really quick bite which can up your catch rate and end up with more fish in your net at the end of the day so that is a brilliant thing to try lower your rig in feed your bait on top and hopefully you get a quick bite Try both on the day, sometimes feed and lower your rig in, sometimes lower your rig in and feed and just see which one works best. But there's definitely an advantage on days to feed in after your rig's in the water and settled. Now the next thing is, if you start to get a lot of indications, you may be foul looking some fish, getting some liners, then it can always be worth putting your pellets in a lot quieter, closer to the surface or dip your pot in the water let your pellets come out without any noise from them tapping on the surface. There's a bite in a fish. And that's the first indication I've had since I fed my bait. So it just shows that I'm not getting any problems with liners. But if I was that way of just feeding your pellets lower to the water or from in the water can make a massive difference. And you can 
cut down on your line is it keeps the fish looking down for the bait instead of instead of looking towards the surface for the sound of bait that's coming that's a nice f1 lovely fish hooked straight in the lip so i think the key is to sort of vary how you're putting your rig in and when you're feeding and the way you're feeding your bait to suit suit the way the fish are feeding don't think or get drawn into thinking that there's only one way to feed and to fish with pellets there is other ways of doing it and it might only be slight changes but the difference between maybe feeding on top of your floor or following your bait in with your floor feeding your bait from a height or feeding your bait from in the water can make a massive massive difference and you can get so many more bites and catch so many more fish by just doing it right to suit how the fish are eating and what's happening in your peg so don't just be sort of robotic and keep repeating the same process over and over again because you're often missing out on a lot of fish doing it that way by mixing things up a bit and varying it you'll find out exactly how the fish are feeding on the day and make the most of your peg the end of a great day's fishing to be honest um lovely to be back out in the sun again sun's shining weather's warm no ice no snow so hopefully this is the start of spring now i hope you've picked up a few little hints and tips that might help you out with your fishing along the way and like always if you've enjoyed the video please do remember to like and subscribe to the channel if you've got any questions just drop them into the comments i'll help the best i can and I hope to see you all again in my next video.